Good morning, friends. Well, I thought today we'd take another prayer walk. So, uh, before we get too much into the prayer, I wanted to share with you a, a bit of a revelation I had. I'm not a good journaler. I'm actually really terrible at it. I know it's a great spiritual practice. I know it's a good thing for us to do to get perspective on our lives, check back in on our pasts, that sort of thing. I'm just terrible at it. Uh, however, I've had moments of doing well at it, and with all the extra time of quarantine, that's not true, there's not a ton of extra time, there's a ton of extra work to be quarantined, but uh, I did have time to go back and review one of them and found this passage that really, I don't know, jolted me. I wrote this? Uh, maybe it's not that important, but it was for me. So here's this passage about prayer. Prayer is not just communication with God. It is spiritual warfare. As we attempt to tune in to the holy, the devil is attempting to disrupt those lines of communication. So lay the foundation calmly. Raise the ramparts of waiting in your prayer life to block out Satan and center on God. Ooh. Okay, so that is really encouraging me to, I, I mean, I pray often, but to pray even more intently, to make sure that it's not just prayers for my own joy, but actually prayers for those around me that my friends, my family would find love and victory. So, uh, of course, the love of Christ and victory over fear and death, that sort of thing. Uh, so today we're gonna pray, but we're, we're engaging in spiritual warfare. We're standing against the darkness, the fear, the loneliness, the isolation, the voices of negativity and doubt. We're telling all those things to shut it because we've got the still small voice of God and we will not let it be drowned out. So today, as we pray, uh, would you please find yourself a quiet moment or go out on a walk like this somewhere where you and your thoughts can be alone and get a little more quiet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us a number of prayer prompts and then simply let you pray. Maybe that's out loud. Maybe that's in the silence of your own heart. Uh, and we'll just do this prompt after prompt after prompt and then we'll finish and I've got a prayer from St. Clement of Rome. He's one of the old churchy guys that I like reading his, his writings. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to start with a prayer and then give prompts. Uh, and you just calm yourself, center, think about God and God alone. And that every word we utter, every thought we pass, every pause we take to listen, we're telling the devil he does not win. We are seeking God and finding communion with him. Let's pray. Dear God, today I'm so grateful. I can walk outside without a jacket. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the chirps and the sounds and the squirrels running and chattering. I thank you, God, for dry weather that uh, it's not currently pouring and I don't have to try and juggle a phone and an umbrella. I thank you for little blessings like this. I thank you for uh, my wife being able to go to the clinic today and help others and pray for safety upon her. I thank you for the opportunity to have some exclusive time with Jacob at home. Uh, Lord, for blessings great and small, thank you. I lift up my friends and family to you church, our community, the selfishness of people that has them hoarding things that aren't even necessary. Not just toilet paper, Lord. I'm, I'm thinking like hoarding joy from others. But I simply ask you for intervention at this moment in our lives and our society, God. And so I, along with all these others who are praying along, simply ask you to intervene in these things, in these ways, and are confident to pray because we trust that you are God, that you are moving and active. 
So with all that being said, Lord, would you please hear our prayers as we pray now first for our families, those most immediate people who are precious to us. Lord, hear our prayers. This is when you pray. Now, we pray for our communities, the relationships, whatever that community is. Maybe it's our city, our church, our school communities, things like that. Uh, we pray for our communities now. Lord, hear our prayers. Now, let us pray for our children. I'm thinking here generationally, those who are coming up after us, the world that we're leaving them. Let's pray for our children. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us now pray for our senior citizens and those who are most vulnerable in this time of coronavirus, those without access to health care and basic needs, uh, especially the poor and homeless. Lord, hear our prayers. You too, thanks. Amen. And now let us pray for um, our civic leaders, our government leaders, uh, those who are attempting to help administrate the addressing of this pandemic. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Lord, uh, now we lift up all those medical professionals who are on the front lines dealing with this, with, in some cases, cobbled together personal protective equipment, PPE supplies, uh, but then all the supply lines that run behind those medical professionals. Let's now pray for those who are addressing this crisis, uh, the boots on the ground, so to speak. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Now, let's pray for those who are grieving, surrounded by fear, as they've got family members who are in the hospitals, who are sick, whether from the pandemic or any other illness. Cancer is still a real thing. AIDS is still a real thing. Uh, pneumonia and other, just all the health things. Uh, anyone that you know with a medical issue right now, Lord, hear our prayers. Let's pray.
pray for the world. I've got friends messaging me from Rwanda and Uganda, uh, a couple in Kenya, one in India. That, I mean, here in America, yeah, sure, it's getting bad, but we've got pretty decent social network systems and, and uh, I mean, social support systems and things like that. My friends are living in mud houses with no sort of food stamps or anything like that, but they are also getting arrested nearly on site for stepping out their doors and can't work and the crops aren't ready. And it's still a pretty agrarian society, especially in Rwanda and Uganda for my friends there. And they're not sure if they're even gonna survive because of starvation, not Corona. Let's pray for the world. Lord, hear our prayers. Finally, let us pray for this idea of peace. Inner peace, outer peace, community peace, peace between people and peoples, peace in the world, that we would band together as children of God and not keep sniping. Let's pray for peace. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We beg you, O Lord, to help and defend us. Deliver the oppressed. Pity the innocent. Raise the fallen. Show yourself to the needy. Heal the sick. Bring back those of your people who have gone astray. Feed the hungry. Lift up the weak. Take off the prisoner's chains. May every people come to know that you alone are God, that Jesus is your child, that we're your people, the sheep that you pasture by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this prayer walk. I'm thrilled that you came, and I hope that this incites you to deeper, more frequent, and more intentional prayer. I know it has for me. Thanks for joining, and if you do need anything, remember, you're not alone comment here. We'll try and connect you to resources. Love you, and I pray the blessings of God upon you. Go in peace. You're loved.